Hey guys, in this video, I want to discuss with you the topic that is scalp fibrosis. One of the major underlying causative factors and some things you can do naturally to start to remedy it and possibly even restore the natural coherence to your scalp tissue so your hair can grow normally again. So this video topic was inspired by the large popularity growing around our hair loss and hair regrowth videos, as well as the Forever Healthy Hair course that we've created over at the Wellness Academy. So it probably goes without saying that hair loss is a major topic of interest. It's definitely a popular topic here on the channel because hair loss tends to affect men more than it does women. However, women too are definitely very negatively affected by hair loss, especially given its underlying pathology. You know, we have a pretty equal amount of female and male students at the Wellness Academy in that particular course. So I'm very aware that it's negatively affecting both men and women. And the topic that is scalp fibrosis is something that also both men and women should be aware of and its roles in the development of hair loss. And for men particularly, the slick, shiny, bald scalp that you see typically associated with the male pattern baldness or the androgenic alopecia. So in short, if you're not aware of what scalp fibrosis is, or if you've never even heard of this in relationship to hair loss, then you're probably going to find this video incredibly insightful. If you're not even aware of what the word fibrosis means, it's actually very simple to understand and break down. Fibrosis generally refers to scar tissue. So when a tissue becomes fibrotic, there's an over accumulation or production of collagen fibers. So skin fibroblasts, and this leads to scar tissue. So the collagen becomes very, very thick. And if you've ever touched a scar, they're sort of like numb. You can kind of dig your finger into it a little bit. I know I have a scar on my knee and it's rather insensitive. And this is because the skin there becomes very, very thick due to the over accumulation of the collagen fibers. And this can obviously lead to the dysfunctioning of that skin tissue. So in the case of scalp fibrosis, we're literally talking about a scarred scalp which is why you see in particular regions of the scalp or maybe the entire top of the scalp, it gives this shiny, slick appearance and that's the scar tissue. And of course, how this can negatively affect the growth and the health of the hair is because the scalp as skin tissue becomes impaired. It's not functioning properly. And in this case, the hair follicle is typically dormant beneath that shiny, fibrotic tissue. And obviously the hair is not going to be able to grow through that thick layer of collagen, which results in the appearance of baldness. So obviously this is a major concern because this is typically what's more so associated with permanent hair loss is once the scalp of a particular region becomes fibrotic, then the hair follicles are basically lying dormant and they're incapable of penetrating that fibrotic tissue. So you're not going to see any hair growth in those particular areas. However, there is hope. There is things you can do about it. Not all scar tissue is permanent. There's tons of research around the regeneration of fibrotic tissue. There's interesting research on the benefits of things like glycine and apigenin, naringenin, and even things like aspirin for restoring the coherence to liver fibrosis, which has been otherwise considered irreversible. So the point is fibrotic tissue can be restored and regenerated if you're doing the right things. But I think the important thing to understand here is that when dealing with hair loss, ultimately the underlying causes are all the same. The difference in various types of hair loss are due to the chronicness of it. I'm not sure if that's even a word, but basically how long has the underlying stress been persisting, therefore determining the rate or the progressiveness of the hair loss. So in the case of a slick, shiny, bald head, you can rest assured that that person has probably been undergoing some chronic metabolic stress for a very long time because ultimately all scar tissue is preceded by inflammation or injury. So there has been chronic stress that has been going on probably for years leading to chronic inflammation. And over time, that chronic inflammation has been slowly and slowly basically leading to the accumulation of this scar tissue in the scalp. 
Now, the big question is why does it accumulate in just a certain pattern of the scalp, certain region of the scalp, when there's no uh, direct injury? So normally if you get a scar, you fall down, cut yourself, it's obvious why there's scar tissue in that particular area. And at least according to some pretty sound physiological research, this has a lot to do with something called mast cells. So mast cells, for those of you unaware, are basically immune cells. They are the centennials of the innate immune system. Basically they're being produced anytime there is a perceived threat or change in the physiology, in the biology that's throwing off homeostasis. And they're going in there and they're trying to regulate the injury or the stress. What's interesting here is that the accumulation of mast cells has been seen to be fourfold in the scalps of balding men as seen in this study. So this means, in other words, that given what mast cells are and their roles in the body, that in the scalps of balding men, these people are undergoing chronic stress. So they're experiencing at least fourfold the amount of stress of a normal person, resulting in the increased production of these mast cells and their activity, constantly trying to regulate the chaos and the stress that's occurring in the body. And basically over time, what tends to occur is that as stress becomes persistent and chronic, that the mast cells start to degranulate and the inflammation starts to negatively affect the tissue surrounding the body. So you could look at inflammation and the damage of inflammation as really a byproduct of the body's attempt to survive and cope with a stress. So in fewer words, you might consider the degranulation of mast cells or the accumulation of them to be a sign that the body has undergone chronic stress and the immune system's chronically, constantly trying to cope with that stress, regulate things and get the body back into homeostasis. So it's a good sign that the body has been undergoing stress for some time. So this is the big difference between our viewpoint and the conventional viewpoint. Our viewpoint is that hair loss is a maladaptive response to stress, meaning that certainly your genetic predisposition could affect that because you know birth is a stress, you know, how you were raised could be a stress. There is a certain predisposition, but at the end of the day, your response to stressful events, your psychological, mental and emotional health, your diet, your environment, your lifestyle habits, all those things could be activators of stress that initiate the entire chain of events that lead to baldness. On the other hand, you know, the conventional viewpoint is, you know, don't consider any of your actions. You know, you're not in charge of anything. You're just a victim or the effect of your genetics. And that's just simply not true. It also makes you a victim incapable of doing anything about it. So that's why I don't agree with that viewpoint. And what's interesting is that looking at this research just sort of validates our viewpoint more and more. Because ultimately, we're finding out, you know, in the scalps of balding men, there's fourfold the amount of mast cells that should be in the scalp. And the mast cells are only activated by a disturbance of homeostasis. Meaning that what is preceding the mast cell activity and degranulation is always some sort of disturbance, some sort of stress. It could be a toxin. It could be psychological stress. It could be a dietary stressor. It could be an environmental stressor. Any of these things could activate the degranulation of mast cells or the activity of the immune system. In fact, there's over 200 known mediators or activators of mast cells, meaning that there's over 200 things that could be contributing to baldness in this particular way or scalp fibrosis. And I wanna to talk to you about three of these major mediators or activators and give you some helpful tips for inhibiting them thus preventing the overactivation of the mast cells, which could potentially not only prevent you from experiencing scalp fibrosis or baldness, but could give your scalp a break from stress and help it start to regenerate. So of those three primary activators, we have estrogen. Estrogen activates something called prostaglandins. And there's a particular type of prostaglandins, prostaglandin D2, that are not only known to accumulate in the scalps of balding men, but are actual activators of mast cells. And the other major one is histamine. And what's interesting is all three of these tend to have a feedback loop with one another. Estrogen actually stimulates prostaglandins and histamine, but all three of them in of themselves are also activators of mast cell degranulation, which could lead to scalp fibrosis. So in summary, 
Scalp fibrosis is basically the scarring of the scalp, which is preceded by inflammation or injury to the scalp. We also know that in the scalps of balding men, or particularly fibrotic scalps, the shiny bald scalp, there is a fourfold accumulation of mast cells, which are immune cells that are only being produced in response to some sort of stress, inflammation, or injury. So this tells us so far that scalp fibrosis is preceded by mast cell degranulation, which is preceded by an immune response, inflammation or stress. And the particular biochemical stressors that start this whole chain of events, some of the major ones are estrogen, prostaglandins, and histamine. And this is actually all fantastic news to figure this stuff out because there are simple things we can do to start inhibiting the production of these major activators of mast cells, which would ultimately be contributing to a fibrotic scalp. So I wanna give you a couple of very simple tips now for inhibiting these activators and therefore inhibiting scalp fibrosis and potentially even reversing it. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend as always is to just take a quick look at some of the videos we've made on how to lower estrogen. Basically those videos are gonna give you just about everything you need to know as to how to start to lower estrogen in your life and your diet and some helpful herbs and supplements to rid the body of excess estrogen. That's going to be huge because estrogen is a major mediator to not just the mast cells, but the other two major activators, the prostaglandins, as well as histamine. The second thing you're going to want to do is take proactive steps to lower that histamine. One of my favorite herbs on the planet is nettle root because it really is one of those cure-all sort of herbs. It targets all of the major problems or underlying causative factors in a lot of the issues people are dealing with today. Hyperactive immune systems, chronic inflammation, chronic allergenic responses, excess estrogen, and even excess histamine. So it's a natural antagonist to the production of histamine, which is probably one of the other major reasons it's so fantastic for helping with hair loss. So nettle root is a fantastic natural antihistamine, but in addition to supplementing with that nettle root, I would also recommend just adhering to a general low histamine diet. So if you wanna learn more about what that would look like, you could very easily just hop on Google, type in low histamine diet, get something that looks like this, a list of the highest histamine rich foods and start to avoid those or decrease your intake of them. Now something else that's major in regards to all cases of hair loss and all health problems is to reduce your stress. Easier said than done, which is why we have tons of videos here on the channel that dive into everything from how to use cognitive therapy, exercises and approaches, to various herbs, to lifestyle practices, to reducing stress. And one of the reasons this is so important in regards to scalp fibrosis is because the corticotropin hormones or stress hormones secreted under stress can actually destabilize mast cells, causing them to become degranulated and overaccumulated in your scalp and body overall. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take proactive steps to inhibit those prostaglandins. One of the best ways to do this is to avoid the consumption of polyunsaturated fats. They contain fatty acids like linoleic acid, which are actually the building blocks of the prostaglandins. So by avoiding the consumption of their building blocks, you can prevent their overproduction. And last but not least, just to give you a couple of very helpful herbs that can help inhibit mast cell degranulation overall, some of the best that have been proven are gonna be herbs, again, like nettle root, herbs such as turmeric, holy basil, thyme, and ginger. In one way or another, all these herbs can help stabilize mast cells, preventing their degranulation and the fibrosis of the scalp. So there you have it. For those of you who have been dealing with hair loss or if you've been particularly wondering what to do about scalp fibrosis, these are just a couple of really fantastic tips. There are, of course, more things you can do outside the realm of this video to correct scalp fibrosis, but I think I've given you a pretty well-rounded viewpoint and some practical things to get you started. But if you are interested in learning more, remember we have an entire online course, Forever Healthy Hair, you can find here or in the description box below, and you'll learn everything you need to know about correcting hair loss from a physiological point of view, a very holistic but scientifically sound perspective. So definitely check that course out again in the description box below. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos. And of course, for learning more, as always, check out our blog, our online tonic herb shop, and Wellness Academy, all which you can find in the description box below.